All right, good George evening, everybody. Able to be here. George is not able to be here. Um, so we have a fairly light agenda tonight. We got um, the first up is the request for determination of applicability by Brendan Monahan and um, board. You know, sometimes people actually watch these recordings. So I'm going to ask you to just describe the project. If you want, I can share screen because I have it up here or you can. That would be great. Like... That would be great. OK. Um, there's an existing. Approximately 588 square foot structure on the property, and the proposal is to demolish that structure and rebuild it with an approximately 343 square foot addition to the west of the existing structure. So it's essentially going to be in the same place um, as the existing house. It's uh, 68, a little bit over 68 feet from the bordering vegetated wetland located at the rear of the property. Um, and there's also an offsite wetland along Haydenville Road that there's not going to be any work proposed within the 100 foot buffer zone to that wetland. So all uh, before uh, construction begins, uh, a silt fence and or double staked hay bales will be put up at 50 feet from the bordering vegetated wetland. And that will be the limit of work line. No work will be done in that area within 50 feet. All the demolition debris and excavated soils are going to be removed from the site. So there shouldn't be much um, potential for erosion. And that's about it. There's an existing well, there's an existing um, all, existing septic system, which is past Title V, and there's existing plumbing and everything in the structure, which all of the pipes and stuff are going to be uh, tapped into. Okay. Thank you. Um, questions from the commission? None for me, thanks. I have no questions. Andy? No, no questions, sorry. Yeah, this seems very straightforward and very simple. So um, the decision before us is to re issue a negative determination of applicability. Um, and we have the option of putting on conditions or not. Does anybody have conditions that they would suggest if we approve this? I would say the one condition was proper disposal of the soils, was all the not weed. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. That sounds good. All right. So the proposal before us is to issue a negative determination of applicability with one condition about proper disposal of any uh, soil that might contain knotweed fragments. Do you need to define proper? Uh, I don't think so because I'm not exactly sure what that would mean. You know whether it'd have to be incinerated or or, or buried deep in a landfill or or what. Um, Ward, how do we properly dispose of soil that's potentially <laughs> contaminated with knotweed? Well, generally, I think you'd separate the knotweed roots from the soil and make two separate piles and let the knotweed roots dry and die in the sun. But that's <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could screen the soil and, and get the fragments that way. That that would be the way to do it. I think the important thing is not to take the soil and move it to another site, you know, and just yeah. use it as fill. Yeah, so I guess take care not to spread the knotweed either on mm -hmm. site or at some other site remotely. Maybe that's a better way to put it. I, I will talk to him. I'm going to call him after the meeting is over and I will talk to him about that. And okay, see great. what he has for a for a suggestion or an idea of how he can deal with that. I mean, it may be that some of that stuff, if it was going to be maintained as lawn, if you just mowed it every week, you probably yeah. would eventually give up the ghost. Um, it, it will eventually, but <laughs> I've got uh, 
I don't want to go on too long of a digression, but I have a, had a small patch in my house here when I bought it in 1995. And it was in the shade and it was only a few feet high and not that vigorous. And I said, I want to see how long it's going to take if I pull this out by hand. And I'm still, it's mostly gone, but I'm still every year pulling it out. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a patch like that myself. All right. So let's um, let's say then that the special condition would be that care be taken not to spread knotweed either on the site or to any other sites, uh, you know, via the movement of, of potentially contaminated soil. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sure. Okay. All right. All in favor? Raise aye. your hand. Say aye. Whatever. Aye. aye. Sounds like we're good. Um, Thank you, Ward. We're not going to keep you any longer than that. Okay, I will. Uh, as we discussed prior to the uh, the meeting starting, I will tell Brendan to put a check in the mail for uh, one hundred and two dollars and ninety nine cents payable to the town of Waitley. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you very um, much. The uh, one thing is that I'm going to be away all day tomorrow, so I won't be able to send this out in the mail until Friday. So the date of issuance will be Friday. So that's when the appeal period should start. Okay, I will tell him I've got it written down here, but thank you for reminding me again. I will tell him that he's got to wait 10 days, business days. Right. Thank you. All right, thanks, Ward. Yeah. Um, so the other thing, uh, Monty, uh, had texted me and said that there might be an update from the housing committee. So that didn't get on the agenda, but it can fall under other business. So uh, Montserrat, you have the floor. Sure. Um, it's not that much of an update. Um, but uh, so the housing committee um, finished drafting the plan. And um, just as a reminder, um, we need to have a housing production plan in order to participate in the state's chapter 40 B program. And mm -hmm. as long as we're participating in that program, it protects us from affordable housing developers who um, can get zoning laws waived if we are not, if we don't have um, 10, is it 10%? Something like 10% of our housing stock is not affordable housing. Um, they can get our zoning laws waived. So we don't want that to happen. Um, so we we drafted this, we finally finished drafting this housing production plan after um, surveys and meetings and everything. Um, and in order to be approved by the state, it has to go before the planning board and the select board. And Megan Rhodes from FERCOG is actually taking our draft to the planning board tonight because they have a meeting tonight. Um, and then after that, it's gonna go to the select board. And I got a little, I can't really summarize the plan because it has a lot of details. It's like 40 pages long. Mm -hmm. um, but some details that I thought were interesting that I pulled out to share with you um, to make for a little clarity is, um, so chapter 40B is trying to increase the amount of affordable housing stock to 10% of the housing stock in any given community. And Waitley's current housing affordable housing stock is only 0.6% of affordable housing. And Waitley's so small that that is actually four units. So we have four units of affordable housing in town. Mm -hmm. um, to be approved to be in Chapter 40B, we don't have to actually produce, we don't actually have to have like rentable affordable housing. What we have to do is um, to be approved for one year. Um, well, no, wait, let me back up a little bit. Um, we have to have a plan and show that we're making progress on it. Mm -hmm. um, to be approved for one year, we need to create affordable housing units greater than or equal to 0.5% of our housing stock, which would be in Waitley, three units. And to be approved for two years, we need a 1% um, increase, uh, not increase, but uh, it has to be 1%, which would be six units. Mm -hmm. oh. Um, and then there's some other, there's another part about how we can use CPA funding, which was a little unclear to me, so I can't really summarize that. It's part of CPA funding. There's a designated bucket of funding that has to go to housing. So yeah, there's always going to be a part of the CPA funding will go to housing. That's what it is. 
So I got an email or the housing committee got an email from Donna Wiley about that. And, mm -hmm. and she said that, um, that you haven't, that the uh, CPA funding hasn't been approved for any housing units, but some money had been transferred to a housing fund, which yes. counts toward yes. that. Yeah. Yep. So there's always an account there for any projects that come up. All right. But it's, but we're still under 10%. Right. Right. CPA funding is supposed to be spending 10% on affordable housing, which yeah. is, it's not doing yet. <laughs> so yeah, if you have any questions, so. I might be able to answer them, but I might not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there has to be projects that can be proposed to the CPC in order for them to allocate money. So I think that's probably where the bottleneck is, is that, you know, we just haven't had projects and what CP, what the CPA yields is not enough to overcome, you know, the, you know, the expense of trying to develop affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It can, it can, you know, help, but it, it by itself isn't going to do it. It would be my guess. I don't really know. I don't, I just assume that it's not a ton of money. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be new housing. We can, um, there are ways that we can do like um, encourage accessory apartments or um, changing existing housing into multifamily. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be built brand new. There are lots of ways that you can do it. So we talked about a lot of different options, but it is difficult no matter what you do. Random question, Money. With the redevelopment of the old Blue school down there in Christian Lane, with that being housing units, will that bring our percentage up or is that just a separate project? I don't think that is planned for affordable housing. Oh, okay. But I don't know what's happening with it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a lot it looked like a multi housing unit. So it seems to be stalled. Mm. What were you going to say, Scott? I said I think we did our our part today in approving the, the <laughs> RDA that came up because it's, I imagine that would be counted as affordable housing once it's available. But I could be wrong. And and who's the owner of that? Who will be the owner of that building? I think that Brendan owns the property now. And What's his last name? Monahan. Okay, so Monahan's name is on that deed. I believe so. Yeah, I mean, it shows. On, Just on the from the map, that that's what it said. I'm sorry? I, um, I was just guessing from the map. Yeah, the map says I mean, yeah. his name on it. And an e uh, a text message I had gotten from him said that, you know, he and his wife owned it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah so they would have to hard. rent it as affordable housing. Yeah, or, or maybe sell it as affordable housing. I don't know. I guess as long as it's, you know, under a certain percentage of the median income or something like that, right? That's what yeah. It yeah. Um, it. Well, thank you for uh, for serving on that committee. It's my time is almost done. Yeah, it's it's a little far afield from what we do. But it's it's good to have some input, and it's good to know what what other people are proposing. And if for ch by chance somebody decided that we should just build affordable housing in the swamp, then we'd have somebody to speak up and say that's not going to be possible. Well, mostly I've just been struggling to understand what's going on. <laughs> As I would too, if I were in your place. All right, any questions? on this or more comments? No. Um, so then the minutes, um, Montserrat recognized the place where I'd left a fill in the blank spot blank, uh, had to do with the name of the pond, uh, which I don't know. Uh, and so rather than call it unnamed pond, I said something like pond on which the Tritown Beach is located, something like I that. suggested man-made. Yeah, that's how I thought it was yeah. man-made. So um, with that change, uh, does anybody have any other comments or, or proposed edits to the minutes? No, nope. no, it looked good. All right, and everybody's comfortable with that change? Yes. yes. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
And I don't really have any other updates. I don't know what else um, is pending or might be coming before us in the near future. Um, if anybody else have any updates or comments or gossip that you want to have recorded and broadcast mm -hmm. all over town. <laughs> Did uh, Wayne Tekoski get in contact with you, Scott? Because there was something that was sent between us through the CPA board that they were going to do something with that curly heat field, or is that still under that project? I wasn't certain. No, I, he hasn't talked to me. Um, if Wayne is asking about it, I wonder if it has to do with irrigation, because at one point they were talking about wanting to irrigate the field. Yeah, it was just, it was like, it was like some last minute project they were going to try and, he was going to try and push through to the CPC. I didn't know because it was, he said it was part of the Hurley Heat project there. So I'm, I'm not even certain yeah. on the details myself. Yeah, I haven't heard a word. Okay. All right, well, then we'll end, end it early at uh, 717. Thank mm -hmm. you for coming out. And we'll now have an extra week before we meet again uh, in third week in July. All right. After that, after that very short site walk, I did find a tick on myself. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Check yourself. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Take care. Good night. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.